Beautiful people, welcome back to another episode, another installation of the Beautiful People podcast. I love saying that. Beautiful people. I just, I really do. I think, anyways, I think it's just, it's so good to just remind people of who they are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I have a beautiful person uh, sitting next to me. He's a friend and a colleague that I just respect and admire so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please get up for, for Santi. They're not going to clap for you. All right. I'll just I, clap in my head. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was, I was going to say, just have like a mental like clapping. Yeah. Maybe I should edit in the clapping. Oh, yeah. I'll do that. would be awesome. I'll do that. So, Santi, <laughs> you work for Union College. I work for Union College. Uh, what department? Uh, who are your colleagues? Student success. Awesome. Uh, great colleagues. Yeah. Uh, to my right is uh, Taryn Rouse. Okay. Uh, yeah. Director of Student Success. Right. Then we got... Uh, on the other side of me, uh, Trina Kress yeah. runs Career Services. Um, next to her is Debbie Forche Sweeney, mm. um, Disabilities Info. And okay. then we have uh, Angela Washington on the other end. She's a Student Success Coordinator. And um, Megan Jenks and Sarah Gilbert, who are also life coaches. I know all of these people, and they're fantastic. Yes. And yeah. Lynn Davis, of course. And Lynn Davis, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's just, he's such a warm person. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. time I go into Woods Auditorium, I see that glass. Right. That's Lynn Davis. Yeah. Because he made that. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Lynn, I didn't know that you were so creative. That's, Lynn, that's you amazing. are an inspiration. Thumbs up to you, my brother. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. If you go to my office, you'll yeah. see a bust of my head. <laughs> I see. You, you seen that? I saw that. That's an uh, ode to Lynn because okay. I made that in his class when I took his pottery class. That's amazing. So he does pottery. He does pottery. You know... The next episode might just be with you, Lynn, uh, doing pottery, because God is, you know, the potter and we're the clay. Yeah. It'll be really cool to have him do his thing while we talk about, that's a great idea. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah, awesome. That's a great idea. So, Lynn, I, I'm, coming, I'm coming to ask. I'm coming to ask. So, why student success? What, what, what brought you to that calling? Oh, <laughs> This is, uh, okay. <laughs> is it a longer? It, it's kind of a crazy story. Sure. Um, I was working as a chaplain in healthcare. Okay. And uh, one day I just had a really difficult day. Yeah. And I was like, okay, God, uh, is this what you called me to? Because mm. I feel like I'm not making a difference. Like, right. Um, there was a lot of things going on. And so I said, okay, God, if you want me to be a chaplain, you're going to let me stay here. Right. Or I get my pick and I want to end up in Denver, Colorado. Okay. Where so, were you before? In Florida, oh, Orlando, okay. Florida. Okay, Yeah, right. yeah, sorry. Okay. So, yeah, I was working um, for Advent Health in sure. Orlando. Right. And um, I said, okay, God, Denver or nothing. <laughs> that day, <laughs> Kelly, my wife, she gets a phone call. Right. And uh, they say, hey, we were thinking about Santi for this position yeah. in Denver, Colorado. <laughs> wow. So I said, no. Really? Yeah, I said, no. <laughs> Why? But that was your dream. That was my dream, yeah. Why did you say no? I was like, this is crazy. This oh. can't be God. This is coincidence. Right. So right. a few weeks go by. I'm still having a really hard time digesting what yeah. was happening. Um, you know, we deal with a lot of grief and bereavement right. in healthcare. And so I was like, okay, God, I'm feeling that tug again. Like, yeah. do you want me to be a chaplain? Right. Or send me to Kansas City to work for this specific company. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> that specific company called they that called day. You. Yeah. Yep. And they said, we yeah. want you to work here. Because right. my sister was in Kansas City okay. at the time. Um, and so I was like, okay. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. not going to do that. <laughs> so I what? said, no. <laughs> you have, so in my head, I'm thinking of Gideon. Yeah. Right? Uh, say, God, if you want me to do this, I'm going to put out that fleece. And twice you put the fleece out and twice God answered your prayer. Yeah. I'm so curious to to find out, to hear why you chose to come here specifically. So as a kid, my biggest dream was to be a coach. Okay. I had um, actually been mentored by a coach, like an actual basketball coach. Oh, right. Okay. Jerry Sloan. He was wow. the coach of the Utah Jazz way awesome. you know, when Michael Jordan was playing yeah. against the Jazz. Yeah. And, um, he was a mentor of mine. And so I thought, I want to be like, like what him. he did. Yeah. 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 yeah, he was a no, no-nonsense guy, and I was just like, I want to be like him. Yeah. So, God, I want to be a coach. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if you want me to 
be a chaplain, you will allow me to stay being a sure. chaplain, or I'm going to be a coach yeah. at Union College. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, yeah. I was thinking of saying no, but then Kelly was like, how many times are you going to mm-hmm. ask God mm-hmm. for a yes? And he gives you a yes, yep. and you say no. So yeah. wow. I said yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you said yes. <laughs> yeah. y- you have been just a key component of what makes Union Union. Um, I've only been here for three months, but every interaction I've had with Santi has been a blessing. And you're, there's just a warmth about you um, that Thank you. just, I, I can see it through your demeanor. I can see it with how you, you, um, you serve our students and faculty and staff. And so I'm glad that you're here. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Same yeah. for you. Oh, good. <laughs> <Same> good. <laughs> so it's the Beautiful People podcast. Yes. Um, the beauty really is what I want to emphasize today. Yes. I'm curious, and and I think our friends are curious too. How do you define beauty? How do I define beauty? Um, can we close our eyes for a second? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Isn't this beautiful? (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Right. You know, because... Okay, we don't have to close our eyes anymore. Oh, but okay, okay. As I'm closing my yeah. eyes, I'm thinking of my beautiful wife and my right. kids yeah. and the beautiful people that are in my life. And mm. I just realized that I don't need the sense of the visual right. to experience beauty. Okay, right. Right? Yeah. It's not just like I see something and it's beautiful. And I think, okay, I'm going to open my eyes Okay. Now. But I think that in our, in our society, in our culture, yeah. we s- focus so much on like... I mean, see beauty. Mm, right. But I think it, maybe it's a little too philosophical, but I think it has to do with more of our senses sure. all together, working together. Sure. Yeah, it's visual, but it's also auditory. Right. You know, I can I can taste yeah. the beauty of, of God in my life yeah. like when I bite into a pomegranate. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it's there's more ways to experience beauty than just... Sure. With the eyes, right? Well, it's interesting when you asked me to close my eyes. The first thing I saw was darkness. Just, and I'm like, I was hoping for a cue of think about this, you know. But as soon as you start talking about your wife, my wife, and our, we have two dogs, they came to mind. I'm like, that's beautiful to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I love, I love that it's a new definition for beauty for me is like, it, it's not just isolated to sight. Yeah. 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 And and I think from a biblical um, standpoint, when I look at beauty, yeah, it, it's just revolutionary. Right. And I say that because when you look at the Bible, you, you know, it's beautiful. People talk Absolutely. about like the beauty of God. Yeah. But the word is only used four times in the New Testament. Okay. And it, it just struck me the wrong way. Like when I was studying that, it's like, why is it only used those four times? Right. Um, but only once it's used in a chapter twice. Okay. Which uh, chapter? Uh, Acts 3. Okay. Um, specifically, it's the story of Peter and John when they go up to the temple. Oh, and right. And the gate called Beautiful. Right, yeah. When I was reading that story, I was reading it in the Greek. Yeah. And when I read it, I was like, wait a minute. This word beautiful <laughs> is yeah. the beautiful, or the word for hour in Spanish. Right. Which is aura. Okay. Yeah, when you ask somebody in Spanish, que hora es, is what time is it? Yeah. Um, and as I read through that story, the theme changed. It was kind of like, this guy has been laid mm-hmm. for 40 years at a temple gate yeah. at the right time, is what right. it's actually saying. Wow. <laughs> so he was at the ripe time, because that's what the understanding of this word is. Sure. Like when you look at a fruit, you would never eat a green banana. You always no. eat a yellow banana because exactly. it's a ripe. Right. And so that's the understanding of this man. For 40 years, he's laid there. But every single day he's laid there, he's ripe. And it just so happens that the teachers and the pastors walk past him. And he's ripe for the picking, but they just ignore him because he is lame, right? Hmm. But then Peter and John come and they're like, oh, this guy is ripe for the picking. Right. (laughs) And like Peter actually picks him up and out. And that's beauty. It is. It is. And I love what you're saying about the ripeness of this man's soul, where I think you're right. I think we often 
we look at people and we're like, ah, and we pass them by. But when God looks at them, he's like, man, you are ripe with beauty. Yeah. 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 There was nothing beautiful about this situation. I mean, no, right. In those days, you have a lame person sitting there like, yeah. where, where do they go? Right. <laughs> what are they eating? Where do they use the facilities? Like, what's going on? Yeah. And so he was probably smelly and people would pass him by and there's nothing beautiful about that. No, right. But the beauty is in that the value yeah. of, of the person. Right. Um, I think that I did the math once. It was actually the first sermon I preached when I was young. I was yeah. probably 16 or 17. Sure. But he, if he were to collect $5 a day yeah. for the 40 years that he was laying there, he'd be a pure millionaire. Wow. But the money wouldn't give him his value right his value came from when peter said look at me yeah uh or and he stretched out his hand and yeah. picked him up <laughs> yeah. and i think that's the part of, of the story that's beautiful yeah. it repeats it again later on it says this is the beautiful right gate where this man was healed <laughs> <laughs> so what i'm hearing is just going back to what peter did right he looked at him and he stretched out his arm to him so in our society today what's the what's the application there of seeing but not always seeing the beauty in people yeah yeah so i think peter's the first thing he said is look at me right so he had to see the reflection of himself through peter's eyes Ooh, i like that and and that's yeah it's funny because the marketplace or the gathering of yeah. the people in Greek is also the same word. Really? Agora. Okay. Agora. Right. It's, it's what we use in Spanish also. Aura means right now. Right. So literally right now means coinciding with somebody. Mm. We, okay. c- we cannot take up the same space as somebody. Right. Like I can't be sitting on that seat unless I'm sitting on your lap. Right. <laughs> we can't take the same space. Right. But we can take up the same time together. Right. And like th- like we're doing right now. We're doing that right now. Exactly, right. That's fellowship. Yeah. That is connection. That is beauty. <laughs> you're, you're, you're tapping on something that I love here, and it's the, the essence of community, right? It, the essence and the, the attractiveness of empathy. And so, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like to truly see somebody as they are, you need empathy, to drive your relationship with them. Yeah. 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 And I, I think I really appreciate what you've done with our campus. You started that trend of beautiful people. Right. <laughs> when you sent that, it was like it brought us all together because it was such an inclusive way of, of saying we belong here. Right. And we're all considered beautiful. Absolutely. No matter who you are, no matter what your background is, no matter what you look like, no matter who you are. Right. You are beautiful because you belong. Yeah. And that sense of belonging and sharing time, that is what makes things beautiful. Absolutely. And it's not just visual. Yeah, it's, exactly. It, it's like what we experience with closing our eyes. Right, right, right. So l- let me, for those who are still struggling with the concept of ripe beauty or the beauty that is inward that's not unseen, what are practical ways of connecting with people's beauty that I might just be that one person in the church or at school that doesn't feel be- beautiful. Yeah. W- the number one thing for me is yeah. that we're sharing time. Okay. And, and I think that we both are valuable because we have time. Right. When we don't have time is when we take value away. Hmm. So like okay. as the pastors and the teachers pass by this lame man, they didn't have time for him, so they threw him coins. Right. Um, pity yeah yeah yeah. yeah. it's like i don't have the time to spend with you so spending time with somebody i was talking to a student this week and uh, they were telling me that they made an extra effort to talk to somebody who was sitting Mm -hmm. alone in in the cafeteria oh i love that yeah and that just like they came and we were doing a heart scan time and they came and they said oh i just feel so good i i spent time with somebody today and i and i had somebody talk to me that has not talked to me right and I was like, that's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Seeing the seeing seeing and and, and and allowing yourself to love, because I think love is needed to see the beauty in other people. And and not just love as like 
I feel like I should talk to this person. But love in the sense of like, I'm going to sacrifice my time to be with this person. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I love the idea of sacrifice because sometimes we yeah. use it in financial terms like yeah, I'm right. going to invest time sure, or right. I'm going to spend time. Yeah. But it's like, no, I'm giving my time as exactly. a sacrifice. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so that, you're not going to get it back. No, you're not getting it back. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's it's so amazing how God surprises us when right. we do give that time to someone mm. and, and how life-changing it is and how it can change the course of, yeah. Right. It, was there a time where somebody gave you time that changed the way you perceived yourself and that you perceived just life? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think my brother bringing me into a church one time, yeah. and I, I was not involved in any sure. church right. things, and I was maybe 18, 19, and I went to the church, and I talked to the pastor who was friends with my brother, and I I said to the pastor, no, I can't come to church. I work. Mm. And the pastor went up there, gave the sermon. And he talked about our conversation from the pulpit. <laughs> I love it. I love when pastors do that. <laughs> so I waited for him. Yeah. After he, he came, I waited for him. I was yeah. like, I'm going to let this guy have it. I, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, he came out and he just stood there and he's like, I have all the time in the world for you. Wow. Tell me what you're feeling. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we talked. And I think that that was a life changing event because I ended up going to church again and again yeah. and he became my mentor. Right. And ultimately the reason why I I chose what I chose yeah. to go to theology. And yeah, yeah. it was it, it was I don't know, paralleling kind of my story of when I was at Union. I didn't right. know what I was gonna take for my major. Um but Bob Fetrick was in his office oh, yeah. uh -huh. and yeah. he cleared his desk yeah. and he said, Sit down. Yeah. Tell me about yourself. Right. Yeah. And I think that that was like, okay, God, you're yeah. definitely pulling me here because exactly. he did this for me. I want to do this for other right. people. Right. So time, sacrificial time, being intentional with saying, you are so important to me that I'm going to give you my time. I'm going to give you my, my uh, attention. Okay. So that's one step. What's, what follows afterwards? Yeah. Um, I think about, you know, if we're talking about the fruit analogy, yeah. sometimes there are some yellow bananas, but you mm. eat them and they taste like green bananas. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the little jelly bean game. Yeah, you yeah, had yeah. Yeah. Right. And so I think the, the importance of it is knowing your fruit. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah knowing, knowing your understanding your, your process. Right. You know, just because, uh, you see some of the signs doesn't mean that you can always anticipate it sure. or, or call it or or know yeah. what it's going to be. So this is where the faith component comes in. Okay. You take that sacrificial step, but it also takes a faith component of saying like, I don't know what's going to happen, but yeah. I'm open to right. whatever the result is going to be. Okay. okay. Um, and again, in our society, we're so focused on results. Like uh -huh. we want to see a result. Yeah. We want to see... But sometimes there's no resolution or there's no result in giving time. Yeah. Um, you just have that time yeah. with somebody and you don't expect results when you're having fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No, you don't. I'm, I'm having fun. I don't know the results of this podcast will be, but I think there's somebody who's watching who's, who's, who's been asking the question of how do I become a more loving person and how do I become a more... Um, a more beautiful person, right? And what I'm hearing from you is giving that time and then also allowing God to work through that time allows us to see the beggars and allows us to see ourselves as a beautiful person as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jaden Anderson, shout out. <laughs> shout out, yeah, yeah. She's we great. Were, she's great. <laughs> yeah. We were just actually talking right before I came here. Sure. We were talking about um, People City Mission. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I used to work there. Okay. And uh, I know a lot of the guys yeah. there. I know a lot of the families that were there. And uh, it was just so amazing to see, like, um, talking about it in class. Because last year she was in my class. And okay. we, we talk about it in class. But yeah. now actually seeing her yeah. in action, like right. she's actually doing what I was like yeah. talking about in theory. Right. But she's actually 
spending time with people that, you know, are not always the most beautiful people yeah. in, in society. And I think I, I see that discipleship process when right. we experience beauty and when we're treated as beautiful, yeah. we are discipled mm. and it's easy to replicate that beauty is like what we long for. Yeah. And so we replicate it easily. It's like a cell. It just keeps dividing organically. Right. Yeah. And it has to, it has to be organically. Yeah. It can't be manufactured. Yep. Yeah. I'm thinking of the chapter in James where he comes along and says true religion, right? taking care of the widows and the orphans, the most marginalized people in our society. If you want your religion to be true, in other words, your devotion and, and your relationship with God to truly mean something and to impact the world around you, take care of the marginalized, the ones that don't seem beautiful. Take care of those. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love the discipleship piece that you're bringing to the table because once we see the beauty that God has put in us, we then begin to see the beauty in other people. Absolutely. Yeah. And and if you look at like Jesus's ministry, he called the people that were Right. They weren't qualified for, to no. be disciples of yeah. Jesus, but yeah. he saw the beauty that yeah. others didn't see. The all the rabbis that passed them by. Yeah. It's a ragtag team of 12 hooligans <laughs> changed the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we we see 12 and yeah. and there's I mean, there's people with disabilities. There's people with uh, mm-hmm. women who were not considered disciples yeah. in that time. Right. And we just see Jesus picking them up and saying, let's go. Right. Follow me. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So looking at our society right now, and our, our time is almost up, but looking at our society right now where uh, the pandemic has caused us, um, for safety reasons, has caused us to, to, to be more isolated Looking at that, how do we still see the beauty in other people? And we're so, um, we're, we're in different camps, right? And how do we still see the beauty in other people? How do we still have that sacrificial time, that faith, that discipleship model in times like this? Yeah, I was actually thinking today, yeah. I don't really see the faces of the students that come through my office. I'm sitting right. there. And I only see half their face. Yeah. But at the same time, <laughs> it's an advantage because okay. remember, like beauty is not, it's not the what we see. Right. Mm. Yeah. So I, I was actually talking to a student today and I closed my eyes and yeah. I was like listening to what they were saying. Sure. I was like, yeah. I love it. Right. Yeah. I love it because it, it is an advantage. Yeah. There's so many disadvantages to the whole pandemic situation, but we get brought back down to the stripped version Mm -hmm. of like connection of true connection. Um, I think about how David was chosen, you know, uh, Samuel comes (laughs) over to the camp (laughs) and he looks around. He's like, is there any other son? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got this one kid, (laughs) Samuel. What does he say? He's like, his eyes are beautiful, right? Come on. His eyes are beautiful. And I think about that. Like when I look at masks, I see eyes right? and I'm like, their eyes are beautiful. Yeah. Which is interesting because the eyes are the window to our heart, to our soul. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost like Samuel was saying, man, your your soul is beautiful. Your heart is beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that that's a very tangible way. Sure. We're not seeing full faces. We're seeing eyes. Right. Same thing with Peter. Look at me. It was yeah. that eye connection. That Right. And I think that that builds that intimacy that we need, yeah. especially during a pandemic. We may not be able to be close, yeah. but intimacy can still be made through yeah. eye contact. Yeah. Um, Stan Hart, shout out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stan um, Hart. Love Stan. I love Stan. Yeah, he's great. He's great. <laughs> he did our, our premarital counseling with oh, Stan okay. and Angie Sure. when Kelly and I got married, and they did this exercise where we had to have, like, <laughs> just eye connection. Yeah. Like, Kelly and I had not never had this. It was like 10 minutes of straight up eye connection. I've done that. Yeah. And the first like two, three minutes, like, this is really <laughs> awkward. Super awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love it because it like, I, I got to know Kelly more mm-hmm. in like the 10 minutes of eye yeah. contact than I did in yeah. however many years. I mean, we were together two years right. at that time. Yeah. But yeah, every yeah. now and then we'll do that exercise. We'll just, just ten minutes of looking at each other, and yeah. I mean, we've been together fifteen years now, wow. and it's like 
Wow. Yeah, yeah. This is fun. We're learning right. more about each other. By just looking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Looking at the beauty that God has deposited in us. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Friends, if you haven't done that exercise with your significant other or your friends or your family, you should do it. Um, Thanksgiving is coming around and mm -hmm. we're always thankful for our friends and we're always thankful for our loved ones. But let's spend some intentional time, not just looking physically, but also just being with the beauty that is um, those who are around us. Yeah. And if you can't handle the looking part, yeah. close your eyes and mm -hmm. think about the beauty exactly. of those around you. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> So we, we have uh, one more minute left. Thinking about just your journey and the conversation of beauty, what's one thing that you would say to somebody who is listening to this podcast and saying, I hear what you're saying. I would love to believe it, but I know who I am. I know where, I, where I've been, and I just don't see the beauty. What would you say to them? Um, you are beautiful. Mm. Uh just today I was reminded of Christ hanging on the cross for me. Yeah. Even though he knows the darkest parts of my life. Right. He still chose to hang on the cross for me. Yeah. Um, if I were to hold a concert, nobody would buy tickets. <laughs> yeah. Because Jesus has bought them out. He's, right. He bought all the tickets. Yeah. It'll say sold out. Yep. Because yeah. Jesus wanted one on one with me and he's there in the audience. Yeah empty audience, empty seats, but right. he's right there in the middle and he's listening to what I have to say. Yeah. When I pray to him, he's there, he's sold out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> he, he bought all the tickets just to be with me. Yeah. And if he can do that for me, he can definitely do that for you. Amen. Um, Amen. He did it for you on the cross and he's doing it for you through the people you connect with. Amen. Friends, the Jesus that we're talking about is so beautiful and what Santi is here is saying is the most beautiful expression of love. And the reason why you and I are so beautiful is because of this person named Jesus Christ. So Santi, thank you so much for having a conversation that is so needed of what makes us beautiful, spending that intentional time looking, maybe not physically, but looking inwardly and sacrificing our time to connect with the beauty of other people. I thank really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Friends, have a fantastic day. And remember, you are beautiful. You are beautifully made and you are beautifully saved by Jesus Christ. Have a fantastic day. Take care. Bye-bye.